Well, first off, congratulations on the new album. I want to jump in and talk about that. Um, you said that that the new album challenges the listener to push past the initial implication. Um, I was curious what you meant by that. I said that? That does not sound like me. <laughs> That's what it says on your website. <laughs> that must have been somebody else. Um, perhaps that's relating to the title. The title detritus in this in this context doesn't mean like waste or debris. To me, it means more like the, the treasures of, uh, without sounding cheesy, like new beginnings, like the the remains after a catastrophe with yeah. which then to emerge from, you know? Yeah. So the album was shaped by this COVID time that we've been in. Talk it actually wasn't. It just feels really fitting because um, I, I composed the music originally in the original form for a dance collaboration for a, a, a large ensemble work from a Canadian choreographer named Peggy Baker and her company, Peggy Baker Dance. And so that these are the nucleus pieces. I always knew it would it become a, my, my third solo album, but it was sitting inside of a larger soundtrack piece. So there was, there were more pieces of ambient noise and Jeremy Gara from Arcade Fire worked on it with me and he actually did a lot of like more drum work and, you know, noise and there was improvisation and then these pieces were the sort of like main themes mm -hmm. that I compose that are more solo violin and you know and my solo work and so the composition process took place in 2018 the the performance took part all through 2019 our last performance was February 2020 and I mastered the album in February 2020 and I was all ready to go and put it out into the world and then the world shut down and so it's actually it's it's been on pause which has been kind of I, I don't want to sound trite but like it's been kind of nice to have that on pause because I needed I think to you know to I mean the dance process and the dance performance was probably my favorite experience of, I've had as an artist. It was really rewarding, but I wasn't quite sure how I felt about this as a standalone album. Like I, I hadn't really listened to it. I was still inside performing it in this other context. And so it probably took me up until September or so to start listening to it and thinking about it as an album as I got closer to the release plan. And now I have this completely other relationship to it. And it does feel also related to the pandemic. <laughs> like it, I think like I had, I had some life experience go down before during my compositional process and the themes of the piece of the dance piece were larger themes of grief and loss and identity and ego and all this stuff so it really ties into what we've now collectively been moving through and I kind of arrived at that moment with like a already made this is ready made for this time we're living in like I I saw it no I didn't see it coming but um I am happy to release it now as we kind of are moving through it. We're not past it, but there is also a sense of relief and release in the work as well, I find. And so it's kind of, I'm happy to be releasing it now. Isn't that interesting though, that in a sense, if you had released it earlier, you wouldn't have had the time to sit with it and sort of understand the implications because you were too close to the, the work in a way. And yeah. if I'm hearing you right, and yeah. that there's something about having the sort of forced year off to kind of sit with something and understand what you've produced and then release it to the world. Yeah, it's weird. As an artist, you that's everybody's worst, not nightmare, but it's like, oh, no, you want to get it out and you don't it feels stale if it's old. Yeah. And, you know, that's always the sort of understanding is you want to get something out as close to when you finish it as possible, because there's this fear that you won't be in that magical moment. You, it won't sparkle. And but I, I actually feel more connected and more like grounded in the work than I did for my previous albums because of that time, I think. So the, the first single is Stories, right? Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about that uh, song and what, you know, what, what the meaning is for you. Yeah, well, again, it got to take on this new identity as a 
as you know the the first piece of the solo record, but it actually did. Be, it was the first opening theme of the dance piece. It wasn't the first piece of music, but it was the first time you felt connected and intimate to a human experience. So there was all of this kind of chaos and dissidence, uh, dissonance rather, and then this moment of of calm and tenderness and fragility between two people. And so, I mean, it's. In that way, it's perfect for me as a starting point to an album. And right away, you're like, you're in this world of of just like human experience, rawness, love, and problems. Like it's it's just like you're right in this sort of life story, and it's very sweet, and it's also got that heaviness and that sadness. I think that is always sort of like part of the backbone of being alive. I saw the video. The vid was it the video with the one that you posted on Instagram where you're you said you were <laughs> in third trimester and we're gonna. That, <laughs> that's the the top. That's the. Oh, okay, that's a different path. top. Yeah. <laughs> what was that experience like? Of, of, you know, because you also have this new element of of being a new mother and yeah, how does that relate into you know literally giving birth and giving birth to a to you know a all at the same time? Like my my baby boy was born seven weeks ago and you know it's in the process of the album lead up to it's like okay can I can I do press with a newborn but the filming for the top and it's a performance piece was really an awesome challenge like I, I love a challenge like for me you know I mean I like hiking up mountains and stuff like that and like biting off more than I can chew and that felt like right up there with something like yeah that sounds like something I would do like you know be in kind of full fashion high heels like playing this really difficult piece a 14 hour day like also producing the thing and being seven and a half months pregnant but it was it was great like it it was really energizing and it's good to also like be doing your thing as you're embarking on this new journey which can also feel like oh what is my thing and is there even a me anymore like it's it, so it's good to tie things all together so I felt kind of like you know giving that to myself and also as a thing to look back on too it's probably it's the only moment of my life that'll be like that so I'm glad yeah. that's in the canon <laughs> for um, myself yeah so talk a little bit about the these dance pieces that you've integrated what what, what how, what's the, the creative process for you that, that you put all these elements together? I mean, that was like a really organized collaboration. We had a year to work together. I was on tour, Jeremy and I were on tour with Arcade Fire that whole year. So we would work, you know, like a week every three months, kind of once a quarter, we would be there in the dance studio. The first time was I was alone and that's when I came up with the main themes. And honestly, um, and this is why I like, composing for dance so much, in particular with Peggy, who is somebody who choreographs in silence. So she brought a lot of the movement material to the table and I was able to respond to it. And I think it's it's so interesting as an artist to get to create in response because it's like, it's like improvising in a way, but your improvising partner's not making any sound. They're giving you visual information and the kind of visual information that dances for me anyway, it's really tangible and direct and it's happening in front of you and it's not recorded, you know, it's like, it's literally like jazz or something, but it's, but it's felt and seen instead of heard. So mm. that, that particular element of the process is what I find so incredibly inspiring about it. And I think that's why the music that I, that emerged from me anyway was, I think it's my best work. I mean, I think we always say that of our new stuff, but I really do. And I think that for me, it's it's a great experience to have an element of like deep listening and responding so that it's not um, this cerebral thing that I'm making happen all the time. Mm, interesting, yeah. So what, if a, a listener is coming to this this album, and what do you hope as the artist they come away with at the end of the experience of listening to it? Um, I think, you know, with wordless music, you can get quite, um, you can get quite deep into your own faraway land, 
into your own imagination and your own just like whatever your sort of dreamscape or your you know sometimes it's meditation sometimes it can be creatively inspiring sometimes it can just create a sense of like openness or wonder like that's that's what i i find when i listen to instrumental music that inspires me or calms me or you know brings me into it an altered state in a way but on a subtle level like i would hope that it can do that i guess for the listener so what do you have on next are you going to do more stuff with after you finish the promotion of this album are you going to do more with arctic fire are you going to do more independently it's kind of all gonna i feel like it'll all continue to coexist in the way that it can with timing um especially now we don't know anything about the, sure. the live music situation i'm not for instance i'm not planning a solo tour right now so i just had a kid so it's kind of this maternity leave slash covid era like what the hell are we going to do as musicians yeah. and the industry but bellarcast also just released its third album and so we have we have some stuff programmed for when things can happen and there's it's this tapestry of like what will what will get booked first and i'm just you know i'm eternally continually grateful to be you know doing music as a as a life so i'm knock on wood yeah we can we can all keep doing stuff like that yeah.